Well, I was surprised to discover that the number one ingredient, even in a natural deodorant like Tom's, is propylene glycol in a stick deodorant. And so propylene glycol is found in, in um, antifreeze. <laughs> so we're putting that on, right under our armpits. Um, and as women, you know, close to our breasts, it, this stuff migrates. So it's just insane. And so what I use is um, baking soda. I put a little baking soda in a salt shaker and I sprinkle it on my hand and I go under my armpit and good to go the whole day. And one of my clients was even um, a hot yoga instructor and she was nervous about trying baking soda because she said she was reapplying her deodorant a few times a day and she tried baking soda and she swears by it now. Cosmetics and makeup are not um, regulated by our government. They're, they're regulated by um, an internal cosmetic organization and so they're not tested for safety. And so um, there is an assortment of, of toxic chemicals in our uh, lipsticks, lead being one, um, parabens being another, it's a preservative, um, s sodium lauryl sulfate, which is an irritant. I mean, there's um, a, just an entire laundry list of chemicals that we're being exposed to in our, in our makeup and cosmetics. And so um, Environmental Working Group has a great website called skindeep.org, and you can plug in whatever makeup you're thinking about putting on or, or um, skin cream and look on the website and see where it, where it falls into, whether it's uh, toxic versus non-toxic. So uh, the good news is that there's really great natural makeups and cosmetics right now. Uh, this, you know, years ago, 10 years ago, there wasn't. And, but now, you know, it's so, um, there's a plethora of wonderful natural makeups. And um, I know my daughter, when she was a kid, you know, she wanted to wear Maybelline Great Lash, and I was explaining to her that it had ma um, mercury in the mascara. And she's like, oh, Mom, it's not going to kill me. But, you know, yes, it might eventually over time. There, you know, it, it, why, why risk it? You know, why put in um, heavy metals into your body w when it's so unnecessary? And there's wonderful makeups now that don't contain um, mercury and uh, and toxins. So she's come around, and uh, I'm I'm glad I'm glad that that's happening. The other thing that's in makeup and cosmetics are phthalates. So these are hormone disruptors. So phthalates are found in uh, they make fragrances last longer. So they're found in fragrances. They're found uh, to make your nail polish not chip and to make your mascara stay on longer. So. Um, it's really important to start reading labels, you know, not just re reading food labels, but reading your makeup and cosmetics and personal care product labels as well. So household cleaners, the, the, the companies have what's known as, um, you know, um, classified or, you know, trade secrets, basically. And so they don't tell you what's in there. Um, there'll be something like 98.8% inert ingredients, and those are the things that we have to worry about. Those are the chemicals that they're not really r revealing. I know the government is sort of working on this. They're trying to create more transparency. But um, if, a, if a product smells really strong and makes your nose and eyes run, run away. <laughs> run away, because uh, they are Toxins. There are toxins in there that are um, that are problematic, for, um, causing upper respiratory problems, asthma, allergies, skin irritants. So switch to hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, white vinegar, that sort of thing, um, and you'll be good to go. Essential oils are good. Lemon juice. You know, just the back to the basics. So sunscreens have um, a lot of problems with, with chemicals in that, um, you know, I'm a believer in getting some sun on our, our skin. Um, I go out every morning and before 10 a.m. and get sun into my eyes uh, because it resets the melatonin and, and um, I start my day with, with a little bit of sun. And um, 
So I don't use any sunscreens, but um, if you wanted to use a sunblock, a zinc oxide would be the best kind of barrier. It's, it's less toxic than, than the rest. But um, most of the sunscreens have um, hormone disrupting chemicals in them. And so you want to look for safe, uh, natural sunscreens that contain no toxins. And you can find them again, we're living in an era that there's really some really great safe choices out there. And if you have questions, you, know, you can go to the Skin Deep uh, website and, and check to see. Um, but I, I have a recipe in my book for sunscreen. Um, it's basically a scorbic acid powder, which is vitamin C and water, and maybe adding a little bit of glycerin. And it's a, a, you spray it on your skin. It's not a block. It's not a barrier. But what it does is it goes into the cells of the skin about 20 minutes before you're out in the sun, and it will prevent burn. And the vitamin C is, is a great antioxidant, and so it, it helps prevent wrinkles and all that. So, so I've used it uh, going to Hawaii, for example, and ne not getting burned. And even my daughter, who's fair-skinned, she was never burned. Yeah, absolutely not. Um, just because it's on the store shelf doesn't mean it's been tested for safety. Um, the European Union has something called the precautionary principle, and what that means is that the, ma it's the manufacturers need to prove that the product is safe before they um, send it out to market. Here in America, that's not the case at all. It goes out to market, and then if people get bad reactions, then they'll have a recall. Oh, we're sorry, you know. But, um, no, it's not tested for safety, and that's one of the reasons why we need to be aware consumers and start reading our, our product labels and really being um, taking care of ourselves and being our own health advocates. It's an internal group, a cosmetics industry group that's that's sort of bold, um, watchdogging it. It's not being monitored by the FDA, and so. Um, it's, again, it, you really have to be an aware consumer and start reading labels and, and buying products with as few uh, chemicals in there and as close to nature as possible. So I love coconut oil, for example, or rosehip oil, or um, natural, um, well, baking soda, for example, as deodorant. Um, Coconut oil makes a great um, moisturizer, and it's great for your hair and scalp. Something like 1 in 64 children now is diagnosed with autism, which is really, really shocking. In the past, it was something like 1 in 10,000 children. So something is going on. Um, it's, it's a crisis that we're in with our, with our kids. Um, 1 in 10 has... Um, um, been diagnosed with ADHD, uh, depression. There's uh, one in eight has anxiety. One in eight has uh, contemplated suicide. This is children under 18 years old. 40% have food allergies. Um, it's just extraordinary. And I work with pediatricians who tell me that their practices have changed over the past 15 years, not the same as it used to be. They tell me now that 80% of their, um, their patients have chronic disease. They have Crohn's disease. They've got, um, you know, obesity. They've got diabetes. Um, things that just were not, they were unheard of years ago. Attention deficit disorder off the charts. So, um, you know, there's something that needs to be addressed, and I believe that starting with food and getting kids off of genetically modified foods, getting them on organic food, um, away from the, um, the, the food dyes, the artificial food dyes, which are banned in Europe, by the way, um, they cause temper tantrums in normal children, food dyes, and that's why they're banned in Europe. But here in America, they're sold in everything from children's vitamins to cough syrup, you know, to uh, the, the imitation artificial blueberries, to the blue yogurt tubes that kids are eating. You know, it's just pervasive. And so um, when you get children 
back to eating normal, kind of as close to nature as possible foods, their symptoms change. So one in 10 children now has been diagnosed with asthma, and that's a dramatic increase from the past. Um, they find that um, homes that use um, uh, fragrances and um, uh, chemical, strong chemical cleaners in the home, they tend to have a higher incidence of asthma. So, um, you know, something that easy that parents can do is just to start to switch out to all natural products in the home and not use the air fresheners and the, the, those disinfectant sprays, uh, and that should help a lot. Right, the statistics are that uh, one in nine has contemplated suicide. And I know with my own daughter, um, when she was about 16, 15, she, I found notes on her email that she was talking to friends about killing herself. And um, it was very, very disturbing. Um, I spoke to a psychologist, and for, at first the psychologist said, oh, it's, you know, nothing, don't worry about it, but what I would do is go look online and see her browsing history, that someone who's really serious about um, committing suicide will have a, um, will search online how to do it. Well, I went online and I saw how to, how to use a gun. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, this was like my blood ran cold. So, you know, she was serious. Um, they wanted to put her on meds. They wanted to put her on this, um, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medication, and I found another way. I found uh, a lab out of Chicago that I tested her um, biochemistry, her brain biochemistry, and then worked with a doctor named Dr. Albert Mensa, and we put her on supplements, and she is fine. She's um, she's happy, she's going to college, she had been addicted to drugs and alcohol, and he told me that um, she wasn't really addicted, she was self-medicating because her brain just did not stop because of um, the genetic sort of disorder that she had that has been addressed using supplements. And uh, I'm so grateful, and I have my daughter back. It's, it's been phenomenal.